Hey friends, we'll be back to med scenarios. My name is Linda Namatovu and I'm a medical doctor. I'll be sharing with you uh, care of an HIV exposed infant. So before we delve into this topic, we'd like to understand who is an HIV exposed infant. As the wording goes, this is any child who has been born to a mother who is HIV seropositive. So um, we need to give extra care to these children because unlike their other counterparts who have not been exposed to HIV, their growth and development may be faced with a number of challenges, they may fail to thrive, they may have developmental delays. That is why it is very important to identify them early. So some of the goals as to why we want to give these children good care is to prevent um, infection of HIV from the mother to child. As we know, one of the goals of the AMTCT is to ensure that vertical transmission of HIV is less than 5% here in Uganda. Then the other goal is for early identification in case a child has been infected with HIV. How early can we identify it and how early can we treat it to prevent any lifetime debilitations and anything of the sort? Then also linking them into care and giving the mother proper counseling such that this child can have as close to a normal life as possible to the other counterparts. So what are some of the services that we offer to these children who have been exposed to HIV? The first and foremost thing is to identify infants who have been exposed to HIV. How do we do this? When mothers come to hospital for their antenatal services, we need to screen them for HIV infection. Some mothers get offended when we ask them to be screened for HIV. They tell us, but you already know our status. But we realize that this is for the protection of your own unborn child if you allow to be screened for the HIV uh, virus to prevent infection of your child and to also get a better quality of life as you're carrying this child within you. So during antenatal, there are scheduled times in the first and last trimester where mothers are checked for their HIV serology. So in case a mother is found positive, she is started on her art to improve the outcomes of the child. Then in case an infant has come in and the mother's serostatus is not known, for example, children who are in babies' homes and things of the like, the mother's serostatus is not known and also the child is not breastfeeding, we can do HIV serology to get to know their status. So after we've identified a child who has been exposed to HIV, we need to give them the right services that they need to ensure that they thrive. So these children need um, immunization on time. Um, as we know, all children are affected by these immunizable diseases that we know of, and they are known as the killer diseases. Though right now, with immunization, we are seeing less mortalities associated with them. So all these children should receive their immunizations, and they should receive them on time. In case you do not uh, receive the child in the right expected time, the next time you get them, give them that immunization as soon as possible. So there are some key immunizations which you should look at and in case a child is having active HIV disease, they should not receive these vaccines. For example, the BCG vaccine. Um, mothers who have HIV in most cases can have a co-infection with TB. So it's very crucial that if a child has been exposed to TB infection, we shouldn't give them the BCG vaccine, otherwise it may culminate into them getting active TB. Then uh, the other vaccine is at nine months, in case a child comes in and then they have active HIV disease, we should not give them the yellow fever vaccine. However, the measles vaccine can still be given to these children as we see that it doesn't cause any major issues, whether the child is having active HIV disease or not. So we've already noted that it is very key to give children who have been exposed to HIV their immunizations on time. So each and every single time an infant comes in who has been exposed to HIV, they should also be seen at the mother child care point uh, to ensure that they are assessed for their growth and nutrition. Uh, we realize that these children are more predisposed to stunting, predisposed to uh, malnutrition and things of the like. So in case you realize that a child is falling in any of these categories, it's good that you counsel the mother on how best they can feed these children. It's very important that these mothers are educated. They should be informed that they can do exclusive breastfeeding for their children for six months. Many worry that as they breastfeed, they can transmit the infection to their child. But as long as the mother is adherent to her art, she can breastfeed her child for 
a solid six months exclusively and up to one year. It's very important for these children to get the appropriate nutrition because if they are started uh, with mixed feeding a little bit early, that is introducing other feeds apart from breast milk, uh, prior to six months, these children can get, they can actually be predisposed to getting HIV because uh, these other feeds can cause inflammation and irritation to their gut. And because of that inflammation, when breast milk comes through, it can seep into their bloodstream. The infection can seep into their bloodstream and they actually get affected. So it's very important for them to be ex exclusively breastfed whenever possible for six months. Um, another thing we should look out for is their weight. Whenever they come, measure their weight, assess their mug, their length, ensure that they are growing within the expected time periods. So whenever you are a health worker and you are administering an immunization to one of these children, make sure that you have linked them up to the care that they need. Another point which you're going to look at is um, looking at their developmental milestones. Are they achieving the milestones on time or are they retarding? In case a child is six months, what milestones are you expecting? They're supposed to be able to see it without support. In case they're nine months, have they started to crawl? So we're going to look out also for these milestones. These children are more predisposed to lagging uh, in achieving their milestones compared to their counterparts that are not having that have not been exposed to HIV. So always look out for these uh, children, identify if there is any lag and give them the necessary counseling that the mother requires. Then also early childhood development. The first two years are very crucial for a child to develop. Between zero and two years, that is when a child's brain is really picking up the most of the things that they're going to use in life. So illness, can cause these children to retard and not be able to pick up with their other counterparts. So ensure that they're receiving the right nutrition within this time. Ensure that the mothers are keeping high levels of personal hygiene such that these children are receiving the right quality of life that they need. In case these children are on their medicines, are their mothers ensuring adherence? Educate the mothers regarding the importance of them being adherent such that their children can have a good quality of life. So. Just about those first two years being very crucial to the child picking up life skills. Up until the age of eight years, these children should be kept um, having the right kind of nutrition and visiting the clinic from time to time. Uh, in order to reduce these hospital visits, their visits should be scheduled with their immunization uh, visits such that they can receive this ample time and be seen by the health workers. Another point which we're going to look at right now is ARV prophylaxis. So um, one thing that we didn't identify at the beginning, we're talking about HIV exposed infants, but we need to know who are the low risk and who are the high risk infants. The low risk infants are those who have been born to mothers who already knew their serious status and have been adherent to their trigemen and their viral load is suppressed. But a high risk infant is one who is born to a mother who has just started her art within four weeks and the delivery is coming upon, or an infant born to a mother whose very load is unsuppressed, or a mother whose serous status is discovered within the breastfeeding period and she discovers that she's actually HIV positive, or one who is diagnosed in the third trimester. So you have around four criteria of knowing high-risk infants. We've talked about um, being diagnosed in the third trimester, swallowing their ads for only four weeks up until delivery, uh, the mother not being virally suppressed. So we should always note and look out for those infants. So we're going to look at the um, ARV prophylaxis for these children. The children are given a nivirapine syrup to help them with um, suppressing any kind of infection that may come from the mother. And this syrup is to be taken for six weeks. The mother should be told about the importance of adherence uh, to this medication such that their child doesn't end up getting infected. In case a child falls under the category of being a high-risk infant, they should take this syrup for up to 12 weeks to ensure that their life outcome is better. So uh, we're going to look at a scenario that a child has come in um, within the six weeks, we just start them within the six weeks of birth, we just start them on the syrup. But in case a child has come in after six weeks of birth, what we're going to do, we're going to start them on the first line of art, which is tenofovir, lamivudine, and pediatric dolutegravir. So they will be swallowing that art while we take off a blood sample for 
for PCR to find out the final results regarding the child's HIV status. So along the way, as these children are on these different medications, we need to take off different blood samples to know their HIV status. So we're going to do some PCR tests for these children and also an HIV serology test. So with the HIV testing, we're going to do DNA PCR and serology at a given stage of the child's life. So the DNA PCR, we're going to do three of them. The first, uh, between four to six weeks after birth, if this child is a low-risk infant, we presume that they've been taking their nivirapine for those six weeks of life. We initially do a DNA PCR because this child who has been breastfeeding is receiving passive immunity from the mother. That is why we need to do a DNA PCR to screen for the infection. So after the first PCR being done at six weeks, the second one is done at nine months. Whether this child is breastfeeding or not, it's very important to do the second uh, PCR at nine months. Then the last DNA PCR is done six weeks after cessation of breastfeeding. Remember we say that this child may be receiving passive immunity via breast milk. That is why we do it six weeks after they have ceased breastfeeding. So uh, we've said that children born to mothers who are HIV positive will be breastfed for a maximum of one year of life. So after one year, we advise these mothers to stop breastfeeding because at this point, these children have begun to develop some teeth which may cause bruising around the mother's nipple and this child can be exposed to direct blood which could cause them infection. So we're going to do an HIV serology when these children are 18 months of age to determine whether or not they are HIV positive. And this will be the final test for us to say that this child is either free of HIV infection or they were actually infected. Um, we're also going to talk about covering for opportunistic infections. So we realize that these infants may be more predisposed to infections that come when a person is of low immunity. These infections include um, PJP, they include malaria, toxoplasmosis, and diarrhea, and many others. So we're going to give them cotrimoxazole, and these children will be swallowing cotrimoxazole the whole time that they're going to be on this um, regimen of the nivirapine, and then they'll continue swallowing it up to when they have done their last test, which is at 18 months. So after they've been ruled to be HIV negative, then they can be taken off the cotrimoxazole. The cotrimoxazole covers for a number of infections. It protects against a number of infections like toxoplasmosis, against PJP, which really attacks these infants. It may mimic some kind of like pneumonia and the infant may seem healthy at a time, but then they'll get very sick for given time periods. And when you auscultate their lungs, it may all seem normal, but when that infant is really not breathing so well. So that is a, a clear sign of PJP. Then also um, cryptosporidiosis and so many other uh, opportunistic infections. In case a child is discovered to be HIV positive, they'll have to take this cotrimoxazole so to cover them for life. Then uh, we're also going to talk about TB prophylaxis. In case an infant is born to a mother who is actively having TB infection, on top of taking their nivirapine and cotrimoxazole, they're also going to take a uh, TB preventative therapy, which will be isoniazid, and they'll take it for a total of 12 weeks. And in case they are free of TB, then they can just move on with the other things, and then they can also get the BCG vaccine later at that point. Remember we said in case this mother has TB infection, we don't give the child that vaccine at birth because they may culminate into getting active infection. So as we earlier mentioned, cotrimoxazole is also covering for malaria in these infants because they may get as we know, here in our tropical country, many infants get malaria while growing up, but it could be more virulent in these children because of their suppressed immunity. So all these children, when they come to the health center, ensure that you uh, endeavor to tell the mothers to make sure that their infants are sleeping in insecticide-treated mosquito nets and all stagnant water is drained away from their areas to prevent any kind of infection in these infants. Then uh, this mother should also be cautioned that in case they notice any kind of infection in their children, they should treat it very early, uh, not, not getting medicines over the counter, but rather bringing the child into hospital. Because as we said, unlike their counterparts who may not be having HIV infection, these children may get more virulent forms of the disease. So early detection and treatment of these infections can give these children a better quality of life as they continue in life.
So another service that is key for an HIV exposed infant and their mother is counseling regarding their feeding. You should counsel these mothers to give their infants a balanced diet, one that will be uh, rich in all the essential vitamins and body nutrients for this child to thrive and develop and make sure that they are not lagging behind their counterparts. So always ensure that you counsel the mother on these aspects so that the child doesn't end up malnourished. Then also another thing is counseling still these caregivers regarding uh, the issues of care for their infants. Remember, these are little children starting from birth through to 18 months where they'll have to be swallowing their medicine, if it is cotrimoxus or, or their nivirapine syrup. So this uh, mother should also be counseled very carefully regarding um, ensuring that these children are very adherent to their medications. Remember, adherence basically depends on the caregiver. This infant is not going to go and pick out their medications, but rather their caregiver has to make sure that the child is adherent, has to make sure that the child is receiving a balanced diet, the child is sleeping under a mosquito net, and all the things of the like. Then also another key issue is referring these children to the right care that they need in communities, for example. Uh, there are support groups that these children may need to be part of, such that they grow up and they're not feeling isolated from the rest of their counterparts, and also for them to easily access art. In case the referral center is far away from where these people stay, they may end up failing to be adherent. So if you can connect them to a place which is near to them to access the services they need, that would be very key for them. Then in case a child turns out to be HIV seropositive with the last serology test that we do at 18 months, it is very important to set them on art as soon as possible and cancel the mother such that they can also ensure that their child is adherent on the regimen. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you are able to pick something great out of this video to help you take care of other patients you're going to be uh, having in your hands. Mm -hmm.